NBC News White House correspondent Monica Alba joins us now with more. So, Monica, what do we know about the impact of those retaliatory strikes that the U.S. ended up launching? Well, we have seen this happen time and time again, Stephen. This is really a policy of the United States, of President Biden, that if U.S. personnel are targeted in the way that these were, where we did see those strikes that did injure three U.S. service members, one critically at the time, that person is now stable, we understand, but that the U.S. then decides that it can respond and carry out that response in the manner and timing of its choosing. And so those strikes that we did see in retaliation were targeted to three facilities where we do know these Iranian-backed militant groups operate from. And so the U.S. and defense officials believe that that was successful in terms of eliminating some of the threat there and really targeting some of the key infrastructure that makes these kinds of strikes possible. Now, what's significant here is really the timing of all of this and how quickly this response came, because sometimes you see some provocations and then there are days and difference before you see any kind of a response. But this one was really carried out quite swiftly, again, because specifically U.S. personnel were targeted and injured, Stephen. And Monica, it feels like just so much going on here. We've got the Houthi militants uh, targeting ships in Yemen and U.S. forces and allies getting attacked at that base in Syria. Uh, it's worrying, to say the least, and adding to this already difficult situation. So how is the Biden administration responding here? And is there any insight on how this could continue to play out? Exactly. We're talking about these different groups. We're talking about these different strikes. But this is not happening in a vacuum. And a lot of it, of course, is connected, according to these groups, to what is happening with the war between Israel and Hamas. And some of these Iranian backed groups say specifically they're targeting the U.S. because the U.S. has pledged its support and military support to Israel in that fight against Hamas. So we know that Secretary Lloyd Austin put out a statement yesterday warning specifically specifically about how this could inflame the region and how this could lead to a possibly wider conflict, which is what the U.S. is really trying to avoid. So he did emphasize here saying, let me be clear, the president and I will not hesitate to take necessary action to defend the United States, our troops and our interests. There is no higher priority. And again, the reason this is significant is because we have now seen more than 100 attacks on U.S. troops and really on their bases since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. Since mid-October, you have seen 49 of those in Iraq, 56 in Syria, again, targeting those U.S. forces. And that is what is so concerning here to the president and the Biden administration, Stephen. Certainly a lot to keep our eye on. And we've heard uh, many times now Israel not likely to change unless more pressure comes from the outside. And on that front, we understand that uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his most senior advisors met with White House and State Department officials in Washington yesterday. Israeli military leaders signaled that they expect the war to go on for many months separately from that meeting. Do we know what ended up coming out of those talks and if that meeting itself could be a signal of some growing impatience for the White House and how Israel is conducting operations in Gaza? Well, it is certainly a continuation in this pattern of these close talks that we have seen between U.S. and Israeli officials. This was a key minister in terms of strategic affairs, Ron Dermer, who came to Washington. He met with Secretary Blinken. He met with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. And we understand that they really discussed a couple of things. Number one, they did discuss how they would like to see Israel ideally move its high-intensity operation into one that is now more specifically targeting Hamas. Hamas leaders. Secondly, they also discussed, of course, the humanitarian crisis and how really the care of civilians is something that the U.S. is really pushing for. And then finally, Stephen, they also touched on, of course, the remaining hostages in Gaza and doing everything possible to try to see if there can be another pause in fighting to see if they can get any of them home. Stephen. Yeah, and the Biden administration hearing a lot from Americans uh, on that front as well. Monica Alba, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.